So I review a lot of workstations on this channel. Mobile workstations in particular seem to be very popular. And I recently did the Dell Precision 7670, a really nice mobile workstation with some pretty interesting specs and the new cam memory module. Uh, we talked about it. For those that didn't see it, I'll drop a link in the description below. But I have one of its competitors in the studio. I've been putting it through its paces for the past week. It's the ThinkPad P16 Gen 1, all new form factor here for 2023. Actually, this was released in 2022, but Lenovo finally sent it over for me to check out and put it through the ringer. Now, this has a really nice processor, a Core i9-12950HX. It's got decked out with a lot of RAM, 64 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, two terabytes of PCIe Gen 4 SSD storage, a gorgeous 16 inch, 600 nit IPS display. You could also get it in OLED, it's absolutely gorgeous. And there's a lot to like here, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll see how it compares to the Precision 7670 that I recently reviewed. So a lot to talk about here today. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this review. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Lenovo ThinkPad P16 Gen 1. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo. I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from Lenovo. And once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Pricing starts at $1,739. Price as tested, you're looking at about $4,650 US at Lenovo's website. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. And one thing you keep in mind about the price, corporations, companies tend to buy these in bulk and will receive discounts from Lenovo. So please keep that in mind. And Lenovo runs sales constantly, constantly fluctuating the price. So for the latest pricing, make sure you check out the link in the description description below. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. So we got some documentation here. Let's see what they gave us. So warranty information. So we got some recovery media entitlement. So you can actually get the physical discs and so forth. And that's basically some documentation standard fare. So we have a 230 watt uh, power adapter uses Lenovo's own proprietary connection. You know, it's not the lightest thing when you're traveling, but again, this is already at six and a half pounds. You get your power cord there. It's got like a storm gray finish, a little bit different than we normally see. Okay. There she is. Okay. So you're going to see something right off the bat, this red piping here. So this is a little bit different. We don't normally see this. And that red piping does give it a nice modern look, something you don't normally see on these workstations. So nice little classy touch, a modern touch to give it a little bit of pizzazz. Now holding the unit for the first time, the build quality is really good and it does have a little bit of heft, which is expected here on a mobile workstation. You're looking at 2.95 kilograms or 6.5 pounds. So it's definitely not the lightest thing out there, but it's not meant to be taken everywhere every time, but it is portable enough to take it occasionally here and there, but it's pretty much a desktop replacement for a lot of folks. So just keep that in mind. For those wondering, let's see if we can open it with one finger certainly can and i really like this gray finish on it it's got a thinkpad keyboard although i gotta tell you it feels a little shallow for a thinkpad keyboard and i don't know why because it's pretty you know it's not the thinnest thing out there but it feels good feels good okay let's check out the port selection let's start off on the left side we get a usb a 3.2 gen 1 port a usb c 3.2 gen 2 port a headphone microphone combo jack and the nano sim card slot for the optional 4g lte moving over to the right side is the optional smart card reader a full-size sd card slot and the cards do sit flush with the unit which is always good you get a usb a port a kensington lock port 
And on the back, you get your power port, two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, and they are full function, supporting data, charge, and display out. And finally, an HDMI 2.1 port to round out the ports on this mobile workstation. I would say, all in all, an excellent port selection. Notably missing, there's no LAN port or RJ45 Ethernet port. Now, when it comes to user upgradability, it is pretty easy to get inside because they give you a nice little door on the bottom to access the RAM and the SSD. Now, if you want to expand it out even more, I think you have to remove the bottom and remove the keyboard to get to the other slots. So they should be pretty easy. So you just unscrew this. I don't know if it's captive, but it probably is. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Now you can configure this with up to 128 gigabytes of DDR5 4800 megahertz RAM. My review unit has 64 gigabytes of that RAM and it is running in dual channel mode. And my review unit has two terabytes of PCIe Gen 4 SSD storage. And looking at these excellent reads and writes, these are definitely some of the best you're going to see, especially here in 2023. Good job on that front. And when it comes to wireless, you've got Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and the optional mobile broadband. It's LTE on this one, 4G, and it's the CAT16 modem. It's the Fibercom L860GL, and it also supports eSIM as well. Now, as far as 5G, I'm not sure when that's going to be, if at all, available on this, but I'll let you know if I hear anything. Now, the big deal when it comes to display is the move to a 16-inch display over the 15-inch from the prior years. So this is Gen 1 of this P16, and there are actually four options when it comes to the display. An OLED option with a UHD Plus resolution. It's a glossy display. An IPS display that's also UHD Plus, but it is non-touch. And there's also a 2.5K display and a Full HD Plus display. Now, I have the IPS display with that UHD Plus resolution of 3840 by 20. 400 and they claim it gets as bright as 600 nits well i measured 645 nits yes people it is extremely bright and the fact that it has a matte display with an anti-glare coating on it is even better it's also a Dolby Vision HDR 400 display and it's x right factory calibrated right out of the box now, if you're a content creator, you're going to love this display because it has some really deep blacks, really great contrast, good white point, and it has a low Delta E score of 0.73, meaning this is very color accurate. And its coverage of the color gamut is excellent. You get 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, 88% of the DCI-P3 wide color gamut, and 94% NTSC. So this is going to be an excellent choice to do color grading, video editing, any kind of content creation photo. Photoshop and of course Lightroom it all works well and as I mentioned earlier this is an HDR 400 display a Dolby Vision display watching HDR content on Netflix Amazon YouTube has been excellent on this panel so this is the camera on the Lenovo ThinkPad P16 Gen 1 here for 2023 or it really came out last year, but we finally got it into the studio. And I thank Lenovo for sending it over. It's an IR webcam, meaning you can log in with face recognition. There's a physical shutter switch on the camera, allowing you to get more security and privacy. The power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner. So a lot of privacy security features on this. And there's a lot of extra features in terms of blurring the background. You could also do all sorts of effects. You have auto framing. All the bells and whistles you come to expect with a camera here in 2023. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. Okay, let's talk about performance. And as I mentioned earlier, this is running Intel's Core i9-12950HX. This is an excellent CPU, both single thread and multi-thread performance. You can definitely get some really good results here. If you're an architect, if you're a program developer, if you're into medical imaging, high-end video editing, and so forth, this is definitely going to work for you. Now, if you really are pushing this, you can actually play a lot of games on this, but really it's meant for the type of task that I mentioned and the ISV certification that this has definitely will be great for those tasks that's for sure but you can definitely play games on your downtime of course but this is a more serious kind of machine to get work done with 
Now, as far as the competition is concerned, I did review the Dell Precision 7670. In fact, I looked at two different models that they offer, the performance model and the thin model. And as you can see, it did come in a little bit more expensive than the P16, but it did compare favorably in certain regards and not so favorably in other regards. So very comparable in terms of performance here. When you look at the benchmarks, when you look at the numbers, these are both very capable, very powerful mobile workstations, and the numbers don't lie. They show you exactly what the these can do in terms of the sheer horsepower that they can drive. Now, one difference between these units is the fact that the Precision 7670 uses something called CAM memory. It's a new type of memory module. I went into it in the review of that unit, so if you didn't see it, I'll leave a link in the description below. But it's a more efficient memory module that will allow for less problems that SODOM presents. Uh, I went into it a little bit in that review. So again, for those that didn't see it, check out the link in the description below. Now, when it comes to thermals, they did a relatively good job here keeping the surface temperatures cool. Now, this does employ vapor chamber cooling, so that certainly helps. And it never got overly hot, never too hot to the touch, even under maximum load. So that's been pretty good. Now, as far as the fan noise is concerned, you definitely will notice it under maximum load. It'll get around 53, 54 decibels, so it's definitely noticeable. But in the other modes, when you're doing everyday tasks, you will not really notice it all that much. So they kept it relatively quiet in that regard. But under full load, you definitely we will notice those fans. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, this sports a 94 watt hour battery and it did seven hours and 25 minutes on the PC Mark 10 modern office battery life test. And that is actually a pretty decent result considering the power this is packing both the CPU and the GPU and the fans and cooling that's necessary to keep it cool and running smoothly. So seven hours and 25 minutes, not too shabby. Now, when you do need to plug in, the 230 watt supplied power charger gives you 80% in one hour and a full charge about an hour and 45 minutes. Now, when it comes to the audio, this sports two two watt speakers. They're Dolby Atmos speakers, so that's going to help with the spatial audio. They get pretty loud, decent mids, decent bass, overall pretty good. They're top firing as well, which I like. So I thought the sound was actually pretty good for a mobile workstation. But of course, you could always add wired headphones thanks to the 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. And you could also add Bluetooth headphones if you need it. Okay, people, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Lenovo ThinkPad P16 Gen 1 here in 2023? And I got to say, this is an excellent mobile workstation, especially if you're creative, who wants to get a lot of high-end video work done, who wants to do medical imaging, who wants to do architectural work. This is ISV certified in a lot of the applications you may need. So this is a good choice, of course. And it does pack a lot of performance between the CPU and the GPU. Excellent single core and multi-core performance as evidenced by the numbers i like that 16 inch uhd plus ips display that is super bright i got 645 nits in my measurements and i love the fact that it is a matte display so you don't get the unnecessary glare or reflections now you can get it in a qhd plus resolution or a full hd plus and even an oled at the top of the line option but that is a glossy display but it is absolutely gorgeous i am sure of it we've seen those displays before but as far as this display you will not go wrong as far as the color accuracy or the coverage of the color gamut it's all there i like the fact that you get the optional wireless wan i like the fact that there's a 1080p webcam that's excellent in terms of video conferencing and i like the fact that you do have a more modern look especially with that red piping on the back now, as far as negatives are concerned, there's no RJ45 Ethernet. would have been nice on this mobile workstation, but overall, it had a pretty good port selection, a pretty extensive port selection at that. And it has a slightly shallow key travel for a ThinkPad keyboard. Now, don't get me wrong, it is still an excellent ThinkPad keyboard. It's just missing that key travel that I like to see. It's just a little bit shallow, especially for a 16-inch mobile workstation. And finally, this can get very expensive, as we saw with, especially with my review unit, the way it has been decked out, although companies will get discounts when they buy these in bulk, so keep that in mind. And Lenovo does run sales every now and then, slashing the price pretty significantly, so make sure you do hit the link below for that latest pricing. But at the end of the day, this is an excellent choice, especially if you're in the market for a 16-inch mobile workstation to get work done, whether you're in the creative field, whether you're in the medical imaging field, whether you're an architect or a program developer. Those are the kinds of people that this is geared towards, and this will not disappoint you. This is an excellent choice and I highly recommend it. 
So what do you think about the ThinkPad P16 Gen 1? A lot to like here. I love the styling, by the way. This has been a really interesting design. Not the boring design, the true tried and traditional designs we've seen in the past, especially for mobile workstations. This gives it a little bit of pizzazz with that red striping on the back. I thought it looked pretty good. And I like that storm gray color, something a little bit different than the basic black we've been seeing in the past. This is basically a 17 inch mobile workstation packed into a 16 inch form factor. So they were able to reduce the size, but not skimp on the performance as indicated by the numbers, the CPU, the GPU, it all worked well, especially if you are that mobile professional that needs that kind of power. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. Now it is kind of expensive, but again, this is a mobile professional class workstation. So you're definitely going to pay the price and remember, Companies tend to buy these in bulk and do receive discounts from Lenovo. So just keep that in mind. And they do run a lot of sales, as I mentioned earlier. Again, I want to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.